I think we're ready to get started. I've got 7.30. Okay. And again, I'll just uh, remind everybody to let's not talk over each other. Um, let's say, announce your name, say your name, um, ask your question, make your comments, uh, try to have a very organized hearing and meeting. Um, so I am going to call to order our public hearing, Roxbury Zoning Commission, Monday, August 24th, 2020, 7.30 p.m. via uh, Zoom. Seating of members, we will seat our regular members, Kim Tester, Alan Johnson, Dave Miller, and myself, Jim Conway. And for Elaine Curley, I believe it's Candy Villari. Did we? Okay. I'm muted. I can't talk. Application by Mine Hill Distillery to modify special permits. All timely submitted related documents can be viewed on the Town of Roxbury website. Uh, legal notices. We have a legal notice. The Roxbury Zoning Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Monday, August 24th, 2020, 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. The purpose of this hearing, of the hearing, is to solicit, solicit public comment on proposed modifications to the statement of use pertaining to special permits 2016-0001 and special permit 2016-0002 granted to MH Property LLC 69 Painter Hill Road, Washington, Connecticut for craft brewery, distillery and winery and business zone D which became effective on April 4th, 2016 and May 30th, 2016, and as modified on March 29th, 2020. This modification to the statement of use requests permission for the on-premise sale and consumption of alcohol, the addition to of one tasting location and permission to provide prepackaged food. At this hearing, interested persons may be present and heard and written communications will be accepted. The application and supporting documents are on file in the Roxbury Land Use Office in the Town Clerk's Office. The documents related to this application can be viewed on the Town of Roxbury website. Um, that is the legal notice. Um, this one's to Peter Hobbit from the Zoning Notice of uh, Public Hearing, August 12th, 2020. Please note the attached legal notice uh, is scheduled for Monday, August 24th to solicit public comment on the application by Mine Hill Distillery to request a modification to their special permits. The application and related documents are posted on the town website. Those are the notices. Um, we have notices to adjoining property owners. Roxbury Land Trust, Renee David, Starrett Yiddings, Kelsey, three of them. Six Mine Hill, 13 Mine Hill, and 154 Baker Road. Uh, at this time, I would like to uh, ask for any public comment. Um, I have no emails to read. Uh, if anybody's on there that would like to comment, and also if any of our commissioners have questions 
now's the time to ask some questions. So it's open for comment. Uh, this is Kim Tester. I have a, I have a question um, and I don't have the um, liquor regulations in front of me, but can you under what's proposed for 2B, the distillery may provide free tastings and or alcohol primarily produced on site as defined in the state liquor regulations. Um, what does primarily mean? Kim, is that to, uh, addressed to me? Yes. Not, yes, sure. Okay. Yes. Um, Kim, it's just like um, there's similar uh, language in for wineries that say X amount has to be produced at the actual site. So I think with wineries, it used to be 25%. Now it's 50%. So you can import bulk wine, you know, and top up what you have. For distilleries, it's 80%. Okay, and so it's, it, it states that in the regulation, so? In the, in the state regs, yeah. The state reg, okay. So. Would we want to state that here, or we don't have to do that, just because it's stated in the state reg? I think that was the idea. Okay. I, I had sort of a question, is not based on my own personal <laughs> desires, um, but the language of, and I don't know what the language is for when people are applying for a bar as opposed to what this is, but what's the difference? I'll give you a layman's definition and having heard a bit from the town attorney, um, a bar can sell, you know, wine, beer, spirits, none of which are produced. You know, I have a manufacturing license. Okay. So we're, you know, from the jump, you know, five years ago, we're not a bar and we're not a package store. So basically we're producing spirits, giving tastings. Now we can sell them as well. I thought that was important to just ask the question and have it be oh. on the public, um, uh, public uh, Fine. document. Perfect. Yep. I'll tell you this, Bill. Um, the 80%, uh, uh, if you have mixed drinks, and you add ginger ale or something, does that ginger ale consume some of that 100%? No, Bill, the, 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 the language speaks to alcohol, alcoholic beverages is the, 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 the definition. The, the mixer would be not on your premises. It'd be coming so so it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's alcoholic beverage. So for instance, if we made a Manhattan and we put in uh, vermouth, that would be a smaller percentage. What I really think they're driving at is a unknown or an unnamed uh, distillery in the county was buying in their aged spirits. So wasn't produced in state or at the distillery. So I think that's really where they're trying to get to. And I think it stems from the, the wine restrictions. Obviously beer's made on site typically. Well, you're not restricted by that. You're uh, you're not, we're you're not penalized for mixers. No, no, it, nor is it count in the calculation. Okay. Right. And uh, how much is in a shot? One or two? A shot, uh, depends which bar you go to, but I, I think a, a typical is an ounce and a half. All right, so that two ounces is a little more than a shot, not two shots. So it's not right. a lot of alcohol that we'd be allowing people to consume. Yeah, They're not this is to... exactly. Okay. So basically, you're looking to sell, to give or sell away prepackaged food and tasting of your product. That's basically, that, that's, is that some, the summary as I see this? I, I think it's, it's tastings, being able to sell the alcohol, and okay. this whole, this, the, the, the food thing is sort of a, a sidebar where it's, it's technically, it was called a craft cafe permit. Right, Whereas right. now I have a manufacturer's permit. When I see uh, prepackaged food, that's popcorn and planters peanuts, but it could be TV dinners too, right? <laughs> the, the I have, I, I think I stated in, I, I think my cover note to the uh, commission meeting two months ago now that I have no interest in a restaurant. If it was going to be a restaurant, I'd have to come back and ask you guys for separate permission. 
I think we're really trying to split hairs. Asking, I'm really trying to split hairs asking questions. I, <laughs> I, I have no, I have no problem what I read here. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Alan Johnson. Go ahead, Alan. Um, now, uh, um, clarify if you have a function in the rail, railroad uh, station that's considered an extension of the tasting room. Is that correct? Uh, I think we've got two different things, or I'm hearing two different things, Alan. An event is different than what we're talking about here as, as the okay. normal operations of the tasting room. Okay. Because I was just thinking if you had a wedding and they wanted to have a wine, to uh, champagne toast, I mean, that's a... That's, that's, that's separate. Separate. That's, okay. that's a whole different thing. You know, just FYI, I've asked them if they're going to have those things now in 2021, that if we're producing, you know, vodka, gin or whatever, they use ours and don't bring in Tito's. But that's, you know, that's a, that's a contractual thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but of course that event is a private event. Uh, it's, yep. I can't and just so, wander in there and grab a glass of, uh, no. And, wine. and nor does this allow us to serve, you know, champagne, beer, you know, or, you know, a tequila bar. Right. <clears throat> uh, this is Kim again. I have just one more, another, one more question. So the tasting is separate from the, uh, the drinks. Is that right? Or is yes. it? Okay, we've, so we've all, we've always been allowed to provide free tastings. Right. So it says tasting not to exceed I just want to clarify, Bill, what you might have been wondering about, but the tasting not to see, exceed two ounces in total, but they could have more than two ounces in a drink I, or, you know, uh, multiple drinks adding up to more than two ounces, right? It's a separate entity. Yes. Anyone else uh, with any questions? Um, I have no questions. I have one question, this is Kim again. Do we have any concern about, I mean, this has been out and about enough for the public to have, if they had any questions or concerns to contact. Does that, everybody feel that way? It's been pro uh, properly noticed. Yeah. Um, Karen has noticed uh, is according to all our regulations of noticing. Um, so that's about the best we can do. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure. No. Things. This is a different world. <laughs> uh, it was electronically noticed uh, through the town website and everything. Yeah. And the, the, the abutters, uh, who would be the potentially the most impacted, uh, have been given written. Uh, They've been notes. Notes. So, yeah. I've, I've been talking to them face to face for, you know, since we started the discussion back in December. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, with that being said, um, I don't see anyone else wanting to question. I have nothing to read into the record, so I'd entertain a motion to close this public hearing. This is Kim. I motion to close the public hearing. And do I have Andy, a second? I second the motion. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of closing? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Public hearing is closed. That's it. Here we go. Thank you very much. Jim, do you want me to stay on for the, the regular meeting or can I sign off? Uh, entirely up to you. Um, <laughs> we're, we have a few things, minutes to approve and stuff like that, but uh, you're more than welcome to stay with us. I'll, I'll hang on then. I'll maybe top up my drink. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we're here. All right. I'll be back in a sec. Public hearing is closed. And we're going to
move on to our special meeting because we had to cancel due to the storm. So I would like to call to order our special meeting of the Roxbury Zoning Commission, Monday, August 24th, 2020, 7.45 p.m. at the Roxbury Town Hall. Seating of members for our special meeting. We will seat Kim Tester, Alan Johnson, Dave Miller. Dave, you still with us? Dave? Diane. Diane. I think I heard him. Yeah, Dave's here. Okay. Um, and myself, Jim Conway. And for Elaine Curley, we will seat Candy Verlare. And we have no one for public comment this evening. Um, and everybody, has everybody seen the minutes? There's three sets of minutes to approve. The first is the regular meeting dated June 8th that we need to approve. Um, uh, Dave you Miller here. Before you approve those, I think um, you talk about that the regular members absent, you have me listed. And then you have at the end that I seconded the motion to close the meeting. So I, I was at the meeting. Okay. So we need to correct um, regular members absent and cross off Dave Miller because he was there. Okay. You'll have to, um, yeah, I don't know how, what you do about the, um, let's see, the seating of the members. Um, if I you were there, if you were there, I probably, I imagine I seated you. It's just a typo. Yeah. Yeah, you did. You've got me. Uh, no, you've got Bill Horrigan seated for me. No, I think on the, are we talking about the June 8th? Yes, June 8th. Then David Miller was, was seated. Oh, no, for David Miller and himself. It says William Horrigan for David Miller. Who is speaking now? Cheryl. It says Neil Gabriel, but it's Cheryl Rosen. Yeah, I didn't hear you state your name. Oh, sorry. Well, David, you were present, correct? Correct. Okay. We will just put you in as present. Uh, Bill Horgan is going to be crossed off as being seated for you because he wasn't. And uh, Aaron, Karen, this, the ball's in your court. Yeah, I, I that's kind of strange I'd have to go back and look but what could it could he have been late in the meeting and is that why we seated someone else in the beginning yeah uh, hi it's candy it might have been the issue with the connection yeah we were having when, when we were, we're having problems have an awful time hearing Dave so I don't know if that's the meeting or not but I can look either way I'll make it I'll fix it okay that's good you wouldn't Jim I don't think you would have seated someone if Dave was there so right I mean right but, so we must yeah, have I think he, yeah. we I had think an he issue. Yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, okay, does anybody, anything else on those minutes of June 8th? Everything, this is Kim, everything looked fine to me besides that. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Cheryl. There's just a slight typo on the second page. I think it's supposed to be Lower Baker Road. Okay. Where is that? Um, Sorry. On the second page. What, where, Cheryl? Oh, under the ZEO report. ZEO? Yeah. Actually, that's the uh, Mark Lowe on Baker Road. Oh, I'm that's, sorry. That's a name. That's a name. Okay, you're right. I apologize. I was reading too quickly. So that one's okay. Yep. Okay, very good. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes with the uh, changes to the seating. Um, of June 8th. Uh, I motion to um, make the adjust or 
uh, approve the minutes with uh, the changes made to the seating. We have a second. I second. Candy seconds. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? June 8th minutes are good. Okay. Um, we have a public hearing minutes, July 13th to approve. As long as everybody's had a chance and everybody the proper seating. Um, Lane, David, Alan, Kim, and myself, the regulars. Mm -hmm. uh, make a motion to approve the minutes of the July 13th public hearing. Do you have a oh, second? Second. Uh, motioned and second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Good. July 13th is all set. Now we have our regular meeting, um, July 13th. Well, this is Kim. Um, top of the third page, something happened to me that I said, but the sentence is a little, a little confusing. It says, Kim Tester noted that property is no longer being farmed and this would keep historic barn from going into disrepair. So maybe um, noted that property similar farms to keep historic barns, maybe plural historic barns or that can noted if property is no longer being farmed. It doesn't matter if it's farmed or not. I mean, uh, just uh, this keep, I think maybe just make historic barn plural might make, make change it. Okay. Okay. Got that one. Yeah. Very good. Anything else on the minutes of uh, the regular meeting? Yeah, just more people that we should have had more people say happy birthday to Karen. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. Happy birthday. Never too to late. <laughs> All right. Entertain a motion to Accept and approve the minutes of July 13th regular meeting. I uh, propose to um, accept the minutes of the July 13th regular minutes with just a slight alteration to the one. Very good. Do I have a second? I second. Alan, thank Alan. you. Okay. Minutes all in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved Great. of all thank meetings. You. Um, okay, item four on our agenda, discussion following public hearing on application by Mine Hill Distillery to amend special permits. Okay, um, we pretty much know what's going on. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, Public hearings closed, but it's up to the five of us seated members if we want to discuss it amongst ourselves more. Um, personally, personally, I think it's uh, it's all in order. Um, obviously, I had no questions on the application. It's understandable. It's a state thing. Um, so. I said right now, I mean, I can just call uh, for a vote on this. Uh, first, we need a motion to approve. And I then we a motion that we accept the proposal by Mine Hill Distillery and take it to a vote. Do I have a second to that motion? This is Kim. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded to bring it to a vote. Um, we will go around. Everybody's got to give a reason. Um, Sorry, was that Dave making the motion? I couldn't tell. Yes. Yes, yes Karen. OK, thank you. OK, we'll start with uh, Kim. Uh, I'm going to vote yes. Uh, 
to approve. And um, I think that it is going to be very good for uh, the business district uh, and brings it in uh, line with the Connecticut state statutes um, and allows the business to um, uh, proceed, you know, in the way that others are allowed to at this point as well in the same industry. I think that's important. Very good. Yeah. Um, Candy? Um, I vote yes. Uh, this is a very reasonable request. We've been discussing this for a while now. Uh, it's a great business. It'll bring in um, more business in that area. I think it's just a, a plus all the way around for the town. Thank you. Uh, Alan? I, I vote yes. I, I think it's uh, a minor adjustment and uh, it, it is a no, I can't, I can't come up with anything negative and I think it's a big positive. Very good, thank you. Uh, David? I'm going to vote in favor of the, uh, the change. I think it's a logical extension to the business, but I think it's only positive for the town. Thank you. And I, as well as the rest of you, uh, vote in favor of this. Um, I don't see any reason uh, it it's, will support the distillery. Um, it's a state uh, regulation, so to speak, to allow distilleries to do this. And uh, I think it's a plus. I think anything we can do to help things out in the business zone and help the distillery uh, it's a it's a plus for Roxbury, so I'm in favor, and uh, it looks unanimous to me, Karen. Sorry, I didn't hear who seconded the motion to start with. Kim. Kim did. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, Dave made the motion. Kim seconded. Got it. Correct. Okay, thanks. Yep. So it's unanimous. It's unanimous. Yep. Yes. Great. Guys, I'd like to thank each and all of you. It's It's been a long and bumpy road and no one expected uh, COVID in the meantime. Uh, but when I get the permit, uh, you're all invited for the first drinks. They're on, they're on me. Very <laughs> thank good. You. Thanks, Elliot. Appreciate... Congratulations. Thank, right. yes. thank you so much, Congrats. guys. Good yep. luck with everything else. Good luck. Okay. Good. Bye. All right. Um, Item number five, ongoing review of zoning regs. And this brings us to, we've been kicking this around for the last few months, um, adaptive reuse of non-conforming barns. And basically we have a, currently a regulation and John Cody, you can step in here anytime to make sure I get the regs right. But if the building is non-conforming, any portion of a barn is within 50 foot front setback or the 30 foot side setback, um, any portion of that building, it, the whole building can't be changed. The, for an example, up where I work on Botsford Hill, we have a, and I measured it today, 40 by 80 structure barn. It's a 40 by 80, it's quite large. And 10 feet of it is within the 50 foot setback, which means 70 feet of it is perfectly usable, but it's attached according to our reg. You can't use any portion of that barn for anything. And it's going to make people say, well, if I can't do anything with it, I'm not gonna fix it, I'm gonna tear it down. And what I'm proposing, and it's entirely a, all of us together as a commission, is to allow the conforming portion, in my case, we're not gonna do this because we're, not, we're, we're a horse farm, but if someone else had it, to allow the conforming portion to be alternatively used, even for housing, um, for rentals, apartments, whatever. Somebody can take that 70 feet now, it's not, uh, there's a lot of barns throughout town, um, top of Weller Bridge. There's a barn that probably, is, they're, 
most of these barns are perpendicular to the road because I have another barn that is parallel with the road, much larger, but the whole structure is within the 50 feet. So none of that could legally in currently be used and none of it's uh, conforming. But if it's perpendicular to the road and you got a good sizable portion of that barn, whatever portion is conforming, it doesn't have to be a large, if, if it's big enough for you guys to do something or the owner to do something, the portion of the barn that's within the setback is flat out storage. No habitation, because I really feel it's a safety issue. If it's within the 50 feet, it's too close to the road for habitation, an office or anything like that. So that's the uh, adaptive reuse of non-conforming barns. The portion that's good, go ahead and use it. The portion that's not good, you can't use it anything but storage. And if the whole entire barn is in the 50 feet, then just storage. So that was that's that one. Um, any thoughts? Uh, John Cody, yeah, Jim, it should be pretty simple. Um, the only thing is it does touch a lot of bases in the non-conforming stuff. I'll draft something up for the next meeting in two weeks, I guess we'll have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just have to see where this touches because it's going to go to a whole bunch of different areas, but uh, it shouldn't be too hard to you know, create something. Just uh, try to keep it as simple as we can so everybody understands the conforming portion of the structure can be used. The non-conforming portion can't be used. Um, how um, it's enforced, obviously through building permits or whatever, if you get a set of plans come through there and and that 10 feet of my barn has to be listed as storage and no habitation. Anyway, so yes, John. Yeah, I think we get an affidavit from the from any applicants on that. Sure. So the non-conforming you know, portion will not be uh, utilized in that manner. Correct. Yep. Anyway, the reason behind all this is twofold in my mind. Um, to give the owners of these barns a reason to keep the barn, fix it up and use it. And also we're, I think personally myself in zoning circles, constantly trying to create more housing, affordable rental space, anything we can do to create more housing. Um, so that's, that's that one. This and then, can I just say something? And sure. Uh, this is Kim. Um, so I, I think that it's a good idea. And, um, you know, for all the reasons you said, and um, I just wanted to, you know, state my support of that. And it does make sense because, I mean, people can decide to tear them down anyway. You right. Know, if it's something they don't want to do, but it might actually get them to think about how to utilize what they have in the historic value value of that um, of that structure so I, I think there's some good opportunity there right and it's uh, I haven't been driven around town to see exactly how many of these barns but uh, I believe because from my trip from where I work to my home I see three of them <laughs> it's only two miles and I got three of these structures so I'm sure there's more um, anyway Let's see what John comes up with. We'll write that up. And always I try to keep it simple and straightforward. Um, and it should be simple. It's, if part of it's not is conforming, use it. Because if you have a barn that's setting 100 feet from the road, you can do anything you want with that barn. Um, Cody, Jim, do we want to do just the front setback or do we want to touch base on the sides? Side, I would go sides as well. Okay. Yep, setbacks, to me, setbacks are sacred. And uh, I would do side setbacks and front setbacks. You got it. Yeah. Um, and then that leads us to here again, accessory apartments, accessory dwellings uh, to create more housing. Currently, as we discussed, um, your accessory has to be, can only be 50% of your primary. And that's just crazy because if you live in an 1800 square foot house like I do at home, my accessory can only be 900 square feet or 
I could do the flip-flop and have to build a 3,600 square foot home. And I'm not gonna do either one of those. Um, what I'm leaning towards here, and I know Kim, you sent me something and I, I wanna take a moment to apologize. I did not read what you sent me. I just, it, my email got filled up. I'll probably read it when I get home. But if you could, if you wanna discuss that point that you made, could do that now sure can we do that so um what i did was i took all of number 14 section 14 accessory apartments and i rewrote it okay all right i apologize i, I didn't look at that um <clears throat> i know you did that you said you I were going forgive to do you. it i'm a teacher i can forgive a student for not doing their work it's okay. <laughs> but, no i'm serious so let me just go through what i had um what I had done. So there are a couple of topics here that I thought needed to be reviewed. Uh, one of which was the whole concept of the guest house, which I feel is outdated with our current regulations. <coughs> because guest houses were put in at a time when apartments weren't allowed and we were getting people to promise that they weren't going to put a kitchen in so it wouldn't become a, an apartment, which that is not enforceable. Right. Uh, I think our regulations should be enforceable and we can't make these, you know, requests and uh, without being able to back them up. So with the change that we've made with uh, having an apartment inside of the home and an apartment outside of the home, the, that um, my uh, suggestion would be to delete the whole guest house bit. Now, what people are able to do right now is to have a guest house and an accessory apartment outside the home. So we could, in discussion, talk about allowing two if we wanted to on a property. Um, and so that guest house actually turns into that second apartment. So that is a, an option. The other part to this is the, uh, what was brought up in the, um, the minutes, and that was, and I'm looking at it actually right now, um, my, the dot thing that I wrote, but I'm just gonna read what I suggested, and it was based on what Bill had brought up too about the square footage. Um, so, okay, so right now it says, a secondary unit in an accessory building should have a minimum floor area of 450 square feet and a maximum floor area of 50% of the floor area of the original unit. So that's the part that we're looking to change. So I wrote instead, a secondary unit in an accessory building shall have a floor area that is lesser than, or okay, Oh, lesser than or equal to the primary single family dwelling with a minimum floor area of 450 square feet and a maximum floor area of 1800 square feet. And we can discuss percentages and whether it's equal to or less than or whatever, but right. be lesser than. But, um, and then there was just some other language, you know, that was in there that I, we could talk about at some other point, but uh, to make it uniform. But other than that, those are the two main topics that I thought we should talk about. Huh. Kim, no, what, Kim, what sections are you are you reading at the moment? This is section 14. I know. I was, <laughs> yep, I was looking, I was reading um, uh, 14.3.4. Okay. And that uh, was talking about the square footage. Okay. And then um, there were several areas that related to uh, the guest house, and that's 14.4. 44, okay. If and then you, there's all, it's all of 14.4. If you wouldn't mind, if you could share that, um, um, the one that you've developed with me, that would be great. You yes. can email it to me. Yes, I have, I, yes, I will do that. Okay, thank you. Sure. <clears throat> um, Bill, want to add anything? Just, Kim, just summarize what, what's more that you, you said a maximum of 1,800 square feet? Yes. And it was supposed to be less than the main house? Well, I wrote, yeah, I wrote less than or equal to, but, you know, I think 
it would be good. simple just to have just 1800 one of the research i did with house and uh, whoever it was that i researched said the optimum accessory building for a family of four with two dogs is 16 to 1800 square feet period that's why i did 1800 it was based on your what you had stated before so i just yeah. did the high number so it, it would be would it be easier just to say 1800 no other factors involved yeah no, yeah certainly no, no minimum size i don't i don't think you know well i guess no I, I, our regulations this is kim again the, the regulations throughout state a minimum and so it's going to be easier to make one change as opposed to altering and getting rid of all minimums that's true you can have a minimum and a maximum yeah because yeah. we don't want anything smaller than 450 square feet i think that's that's i think that's that's, that's just fine I mean, what's the what's the building permit now what there's a minimum square footage for a structure now isn't it, is it yes 900? 450 square feet 50. so that, that's oh, for a building uh, for a building i don't know that yeah. that's right in the regulations right now so it doesn't have to be changed i think for habitable it's 800 minimum This is specific. This is Kim again. This is specific to apartments. So. Right. How do you really distinguish it between apartments? Apartments yeah. inside a home, right? Uh, and or an accessory building outside. So they're just stating it's the regulations currently state that anything uh, that the minimum is 450 square feet. So I just took it. I just left it from what was already listed. Oh. And, I can't change it. But. No, yeah, but question: If habitable is eight hundred, how can we say four fifty for an accessory uh, apartment? That that kind of doesn't make sense. Well, I think what the eight hundred is is for a freestanding building, primary, and an apartment is a primary is, residence. It's a primary. Yeah. Oh, primary. oh, okay. All right, but it says habitable, and to me, habitable is anything I can live in. An apartment, I would think I could live in, whether it's, it's accessory or not. John Cody, the minimum size is the for the primary residence. Say again, John? That's for the primary residence. Okay. Pretty much sums it up. Okay. And, and the Eight. minimum for accessory is 450? Correct. Okay. In the primary residence, 450. Outside of the primary residence, 800. Oh, okay. Within, okay. I got you. This is Kim. Okay. This is Kim. It does not say that. It, it's, it doesn't say 800 outside the house. What, what about just this is Bill? What about just the house? I build a house on a lot, single freestanding house. Isn't there a minimum? There must be a minimum. Yeah. It's 800. 800. Yeah. That's for the but, primary residence. So that would be this is built. That would be appropriate to have a minimum of eight hundred for an accessory building. Right. It sounds fantastic. That's what, John. I'm sorry, I muted it up. Yeah, John, that would be perfect if you did the minimum size eight hundred and then whatever eighteen hundred right. max. Yeah. Make yeah. it flat, no percentages. Keep it uniform, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I, I would. You're right. I, this is candy. I wouldn't do the um, um, equal to, but no greater than uh, the primary residence. Just you know, min eight, max eighteen. I yeah, like that. Excuse me, this is Bill. It'd be four fifty for an apartment inside your house. Right. Better for outside building, mm -hmm. accessory building minimum, and eighteen hundred for maximum. So it'd be three numbers. And you wouldn't have any of the sliding scale greater than and less than you would have to, which doesn't add up most times. Right. So you could build an, a, an apartment in your add on to your home, it could be 3,000 foot apartment as long as it meets all the other zoning and it's attached to your house. Not with the changes. Max is 1800 if we make it that, if we change it to that. But you're talking about an accessory house. I'm talking about an apartment. Is there any regulation that says a maximum size on an apartment currently within a house? I've recalled one of those. 40% of the 
size of a house, isn't it, John? I, I do believe so. For interior and then 50% outside. <clears throat> oh. Hmm. All right, well, I'll, I'll I'd leave, leave the 40%. It, it, I mean, the apartment can either be carved out of the current existing interior or you can do a bump out on a house, but it can't be bigger than 40% of the, of the original house. Sure. Yeah. No, that's, I think that's the right direction. Uh, get all these numbers, whether the apartment's inside, outside, up over your garage or where, you know, if it's over the garage, it's going to fall under the same criteria as the uh, 450 square feet. Um, and the 40% of the garage, if it's inside the house, because a lot of people will put an apartment over the garage. And if you totally build a separate structure, then it's 1,800 square feet. That's pretty simple, Mr. Bill. That's pretty simple. It makes it fair for everyone involved. Everyone. Um, and then, like, the guest house thing, just throw it out. Yeah. And throw it out. Uh, this is Kim. Do we, do you think we need to replace it with something and and say, I mean, is there any it's, need do you think to have two apartments that are outside of the house or no? No, no. Okay. I, I just want to ask. Yeah, um, and the guest house thing, like you said, there's uh, as far as enforcing it, we're going to let these people build an 1,800 square foot structure. Um, forget the guest house because they're going to. I, we just don't need both. It's AKA. It's they're one and the same. Yep. Yep. So then you can't, you can't have an existing guest house and build a separate. Then you'd uh, have two separate buildings. Um, if you have an existing guest house, we might have to allow that person to keep the guest house. Um, the the the. Um, Enforcing it's tough because all they got to do is pop a kitchen in there and you got an apartment. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't be too bad about the guest house if they come in. We could, most people that come in are open. Yeah. To discussion on the applications. And if, if somebody's already got one, we can't tell them you got to remove it. And if they already got a guest house, I still want to encourage the 1800 square footer because I'm going back to creating more rentals, more living rentals. In Roxbury. But does that mean they start with the 600 foot guest house and bump it out to 1800 or they build a separate unit? Oh, well. um, yeah, I mean, I don't think you're going to rent a guest house and I think we got to rent the have something we can rent for permanent housing. Oh, this is Kim. I think um, if people only have a guest house on their property outside of the primary residence that this will allow them to then turn that into an apartment if they Correct. want. Yep. So. yep. All right. That's, I like that. Um, so Kim, you've written some language on this, crunch the numbers, get the 450 and the 800 and the 1800 and the 40% and get them all in order so we can read it. I will. I will do that. Okay. I think it's a it's a step in the right direction because some of these regulations are just not they're not usable. They're not you can't live with them. And uh, okay, we're moving on. Um, Sorry, I moved inside because the mosquitoes are out there. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered what you're swatting at there. <laughs> yeah, those doggone mosquitoes, I'm telling you. The killers. The killers, I'm telling you. <laughs> so maybe let's uh, Don's gonna give us some, some wordage verbiage on non conforming uh, barns. Uh, hi, I I'm in I'm in a meeting right now, so uh, can I call you back? Just by we mute. Okay, all right. Bye. Yeah, uh, John, was that directed to me? I, I couldn't hear it. Yeah, you, you can get something on the non-conforming barns, and we'll be in touch. Just, you know. Um, yeah, we're, we're both on the same page. That's a simple. Yes. Yep, 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 for sure. And keep it simple is important, I think. Uh, all right, moving on. 
Uh, we need a ZEO report, Mr. Cody. All right, I'll uh, just briefly um, touch base on the, the active stuff. Mike Rice sent an application for his Beehive business. He never told us what category he wanted to be. So I had to send that back to him. I'm waiting for him to get back to me. Well, I'm taking forever, but we'll, we'll get that. The, only, the concern with that is we just don't want on street parking because it's right on Mallory, the one lane road. And I had some complaints on that. Uh, another one, Dennis McDonald had an application to convert his barn to two, what we decided was two guest houses, he called them. Um, we denied his application. I'm sure he will come back with modifications, some explanation of stuff. Um, that's pretty much it for the moment as far as hot topic items. Okay. <clears throat> And how are we coming uh, when you bring up Dennis McDonald and uh, Mark Lowe's property? Is there some screening actually happening? Uh, yes, actually. No, there, he sent me some photographs a while ago of a fence he was going to make. He didn't move on that, so I just sent him a letter mm, two weeks ago, something on that. Um, NOV, I was, uh, we were asking for compliance. NOV, you know, uh, request for compliance. If he doesn't do that, an NOV will follow um, so we, we kind of lit a candle underneath him. So I anticipate something soon. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, chairman's report. I have nothing. I think we're moving in the right direction on adaptive reuse and accessories. I think that's a huge item and that's all I had, uh, in my mind in the last few weeks. Um, Communications, uh, I believe we have none, Karen, I don't think. Um, Sorry, so that's correct, no, no communication. Nope. Okay, um, so with all that being said, <coughs> if anybody has anything else they'd like to bring up, now's the time. If not, then uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, this is Kim. I motion to adjourn. Uh, do I have a second? I second. I second. Okay, motioned and seconded. Uh, all in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Productive. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good Stay night. well. Have a good night. <laughs> See you next month. Okay. Thank you for, again. Bye, all. Bye-bye.